Oh, this is a good futon. It's a real good futon. All 85 pounds of it. Really good. So, I was up in the upstate New York. I went to a state park up there for a couple of nights. I slept on the futon up there. It was nice. Now, granted, it was only two nights. Uh, I had a good night's sleep both nights. I was very comfortable. I was not in an inebriated state. That wouldn't be a fair test now, would it? Uh, it's it's tough to manage this thing. It's heavy. It's just, it's dead weight. There's nowhere to grab it. So uh, I'm taking that into account with my, uh, my design. I bought this futon frame. It's a cheap one. I just wanted to see what I was up against. I want to see what the mobility, what the range of motion is, how the mechanism works. You can't just buy the mechanism. I'm looking everywhere. I can only buy them in bulk from China. Uh, so, you know what, this, this whole futon frame is cheap enough, the whole thing. Uh, I would have been happy to pay that just for the mechanism. So, I got it in, I got it assembled. Uh, it's no good, no good. And that's the reason I did this, because I needed to see what I was up against with this thing. This is one of the reasons I'd like to leave this uh, floor going all the way out to the end. Look, I'd be standing in the crevice right now. So we got full flooring around here. That's a game changer for this situation, right? This is a little tight here, but if you, you got to realize the, this arm is not going to be here. It's going to be an armless futon frame. It'll just be the couch and it's going to drop down into a bed real easy. So if you have to, you're going to hop out and go to the bathroom. It's okay to hop. you got to hop. You live in a van. You're not, living, you're not at the plaza. You're in a van. Anyway, uh, I got another futon frame today. It's just a frame. It's not a, a couch or anything like that, which is perfect. Click, click, slide, click, click, slide, click, click, slide, click, click, slide. It might need some help with that 80, 85 pound futon mattress on it. I might have to use some gas assist. And one thing I do know is the foot, hey, the futon mattress company recommends you put that futon on slats that are three inches apart. This is more than three inches. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be adding in some slats in between here. So we give that futon mattress every opportunity to serve us well. And I have a lot of faith in this one because I knew what to look for after having this one here that I struggled with. I mean, this thing is laughable. I can't even get the, I can't even get it, I can get it out onto a bed, but I'll give you a tip. Make sure the door's closed when you're trying to get this out to a bed or you're gonna fall right out the door. Hopefully you're not parked next to a lake. It doesn't work. Oh, I have slept in this, on this thing here in the driveway in my PW and yes I know I have the futon mattress on top of my couch bed that's in the pleasure way so you would say oh that's not fair this thing is so thick and so dense it wouldn't matter if it was on a bed of nails it's comfortable believe me and there's no smell I put it in my pleasure way initially you saw me wrestle it in there I put it in there I closed up the pleasure way and I left it for a week in the heat wave. Came back in, no smell, nothing. It's pure wool, 100% wool. I didn't even smell sheep. This is much better. There. This is the key right here. Click, click. 
That's the ticket right there. Click, click. That's the mechanism. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, I think this is going to work. Ikea. This. Isn't that cool? This is what all the cool kids are doing. They just do and them over here. And it's fun, right? Now I'm back over here. See? So I got this going. This is the other ticket right here. See this? This is key. This is what allows me to pull that futon away from the wall. I would call that zero clearance. This means that in couch position, you can have that futon all the way up against the wall of the van. And then as you need it for the bed, you need some wall space for this to drop down. So as you're tipping it, you pull it forward and you're giving yourself room. The frame stays put, the mattress drops. This is the key. And now all this, once it's done, I'm going to set this on my 80-20 frame, which ties the whole module together. I may be cutting these legs off. I may just use this. I may put this on an 80-20. I don't know yet. I put the frame on wheels, on appliance dollies in the van because I'm doing this alone now. So hopefully that allows me to easily put this in place. What I have read is you never want to slide or push a futon frame. You always want to lift it and move it so you don't ruin the mechanism. It's not going to work. Oh my lord. This thing is so unruly. I have built additions and decks and boats and all kinds of stuff. This is what's going to beat me. Okay, what I have here is an outdoor sleeping arrangement. It's really very comfortable. You're under the stars. You can't drive very far, but God, this is great. I really like this. Thank you, Alyssa. Looks good. Woo! You're welcome. We got a couple of issues with this system but I don't think it's anything I can't fix. As you can see, I had to put a, a stopper across the front here because when I'm doing the up and down with this futon, it slides. I gotta try to work with this thing uh, because it's so comfortable at night. Now here's the thing you gotta consider. This is like an airplane. This thing is great as a couch and it's great as a bed. It's the taking off and landing that are a problem. So I got to work on that. I got two of the three problems solved. It really is comfortable and it's a really sweet couch. Obviously, 
I got to work on this, but once you're in this thing, it's quite comfortable. When I bring this up, see how the, this, it's got to slide away from the wall. See the frame moving? That's no good. We don't want the frame moving. So what I'm going to do, we've got slides. So what I'm going to do is put in a secondary set of slides. And uh, that'll be on my 80-20 frame. So what's going to happen is your motion is going to be pulling it away from the wall and up. It's going to be that kind of a smooth motion. And uh, I'll have to get some, some linear bearings to make it work smoothly. And then this frame won't be coming out away from the wall. But it's got to be easy. You know that. It's got to be easy and elegant and simple. And there's no motors. You don't even have to put your back into it. This is going to be an easy thing to hold. See, once it's all tied down, you'll be good. See this? Look at that. Look. It's no good. So, I got a few problems. I got a few hurdles to climb over. I don't jump hurdles. I climb them. So I know what I got to do to get this funny futon working the way I want, the way it should work. Unfortunately, what that means is another order from 8020. So what are we looking at? Minimum 14 days before I can get back on that futon. But that's not such a problem. I got a backlog here of projects and I'll let you decide what I should move on to next. Now the S-Bar plumbing and the electrical, those I'm not doing the actual install until the end. When all my modules are complete and I know where everything is going to sit for real, that's when I can mark in those lines. Modules come out, lines go in, modules come back. I'm going to be making a few floor changes at that point too. The electrical system I'm working on. It's not set in stone yet. I don't have ink on paper, but I am so excited about what the potential is. That's a pun intended, potential with the electrical system. Boy, if this comes to fruition, oh man. Anyway, swivel seats. I got to put the swivels in the bucket seats up front, step by step. The headliner in the front of the van. I got to remove that headliner, step by step, rattle trap it and insulate it and put it back. For some people, it's a daunting task, but only because you do it out. Of, if you do it in the right series of steps, in the right order, it's easy. If you break that order, that's when you run into problems. Uh, my wall panels. Uh, first, I got to do templates on the wall panels. So I'll be using my cardboard again because I only have another 50 sheets or so of four by eight. But I'm going to cut templates make the windows, everything tight, real nice, and then I'll transfer those to the wall panel. So that's gonna be cool. Once those wall panels start going in and the shower room, you know, when that stuff starts coming in and I fill in those, uh, those skins on my frames, that's when stuff's gonna start coming together. It's gonna to look good. What else do I have here? Uh, I'm just getting close to 10,000 subscribers. The thing with YouTube, is when you hit 10,000 subscribers as a channel, YouTube gives you your own advisor. I've been waiting. That poor person has no idea what they're in for. When I hit 10,001 subscribers, hello, it's me. I'm up at six. I'll call you. You get all kinds of new benefits and features. One of them, the main one that's important to me, is I'll be able to put a post on my YouTube wall you guys will no longer have to wonder when's the next video coming out or why isn't there a video out? I don't know. It's been really hard for me to get a consistent video schedule. I don't know why. I put a lot of time into the, the effort. I got writing to do, shooting, editing. I just can't seem to hit every Monday or every Sunday. I don't know. Things happen. Any one little thing that gets in the way of my production blows the schedule. Not complaining. I'm really trying. I just want you to know. So if I've got that post ability on the wall, I can put a post up that says, the video's coming in a few days. It's a little late. So that's one of the big benefits of hitting 10,000 subscribers. So we're close. I think a couple of weeks I'll be there. 
Facebook. Check the Facebook page in the meantime. Humble Road on Facebook or Humble Road uh, on a Humble Road on Instagram. I got that for my birthday last week. That was another delay. I was away for my birthday down the, the Jersey Shore on the beach. Great time with family. Then I went up to upstate New York to do help somebody out up there. Now I'm back on track. Uh, but you could always see what's going on day to day on my Facebook page or Instagram. Humble Road. It's pretty simple. So you decide what you want to do, what you want to see, and I'll start it. 